When you fill up at the gas pump, you assume you're getting quality fuel. We discovered sometimes you're getting more than just gas. You're getting something that could do some serious damage to your car. You can't see what you're putting in your gas tank, but Carrie Warwick sure could feel it after filling up. And the whole car started vibrating, and then it would just go a tiny bit and then buck, and then go a little bit and then buck. I got maybe 100 yards. Her car tow, her tank emptied. It's really frustrating, and it makes me mad. She's not alone. This West Palm Beach mechanic had four cases in just three weeks. Um, depending on the car, it could get really, really expensive. The Contact 5 investigators wanted to know who's protecting you at the pump. We're just trying to get to the bottom of why yeah, there's bad gas. Idea. What we found surprised customers. I'm, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. And resulted in the state taking action. It's kind of a safety issue for the public. It's the Department of Agriculture's job to inspect gas stations. Take a 45 cent sample. Checking pumps and gas quality. You know, if they look good to me, doesn't mean they're always good. We sit, that's why we send it to the lab. Samples are sent here to Fort Lauderdale. This is the State of Florida Bureau of Petroleum Inspection Laboratory. Where we got access behind locked doors. You'll find a lot of high-tech gadgets inside. But they also check gas the old-fashioned way. You just do basically a, the visual test, it's, right? It's strictly a visual test. This is a sample that does have uh, sediment and suspended matter in it. It looks like rust. And that would be an, considered a substandard product and unusable in a vehicle. You can clog filters, you can clog injectors. We discovered pumps at 14 stations in our area were shut down just last year. Plus another 14 have not been inspected in more than 12 months. And get this, there's no state law requiring them to be. So we took our own samples at 10 stations from Fort Pierce to Lake Worth. After letting our samples sit here overnight, I was surprised to discover sediments at the bottom of not just one, but two of our gas samples. It's hard to see on camera, but the state says it's enough to shut down the pumps. State inspectors then took their own samples and take a look. They shut down pumps at both stations. At the Sunoco on South Military in Lake Worth and at the Texaco on Okeechobee in West Palm Beach, where we spoke to a longtime pumps? worker. They're trusting you to give them good gas. Well, what is it doing for good gas? State records show this isn't the first time the state shut down their pumps. In fact, it's the second time in less than a year. But that was rectified. That was rectified. What did you have to do to rectify it? Because it's happened again in six months. Well, they put the, um, some special filters on stuff. It's not the first time at the Sunoco either. It's the second time since October. Please tell the owner to contact me. Thank you. The owner never called, but his spokesperson did. So you're fighting the process, and if there is sediment in the gas, it could have come from the refinery or the transportation company. And that's the big question. What's in the gas, and where is it coming from? That would be rust coming from inside the tank. How the trash gets in there, I don't know. Whatever it is, drivers like Carrie don't want to be looking back. Wondering. We don't need to have that added stress and worry when we go to the gas station. The state shut down the pumps at both stations for about a week until the owners filtered the gasoline. The state then reinspected the gas, making sure it was clean before reopening those pumps. Mm. Shannon and Michael, it's not just sediment. A little bit of water inside a gas sample could shut down the pumps and also do some damage to your vehicle. When filling up, you have no choice but to trust you're buying good gasoline. Now you worry every time you put that nozzle in your tank. New worries after our investigation and gas samples led to state inspectors taking action. Since then, they're still replacing parts on the car. We have received calls. And the car started buckling and buckling like a Bronco kind of buckling. After call. Something does need to be done because this can just multiply unbelievably and the whole car started vibrating from drivers claiming bad gasoline has cost them thousands of dollars in repairs local mechanics say a little bit of sediment or water in your gasoline can cause a lot of damage it seems for our area that it has increased 
compared to the same time last year. Our investigation also revealed state inspectors have not checked the gas quality at many stations in more than a year. And there's no state law requiring a yearly inspection. There isn't? <laughs> yeah, that is, that is a bit surprising, yeah. Representative Joe Abruzzo is now hoping to change that. There's obviously a problem here in Florida where, and possibly across the country, but what you've done in, at a Channel 5 investigation is uncover uh, what many of the distressed motorists are going through. What, if anything, do you think should be changed in the state of Florida after watching the report? Uh, we need to make sure that there's laws on the books that mandate uh, the safety of gasoline. You've done the investigation. We know it's a problem, so let's get to work and try to fix it. He's drafting legislation that would require an annual inspection, stricter fines, and consequences for repeat offenders. It's a safety issue. Right now, Florida only has 50 workers that inspect gas stations. That's not just for our area, but for all 9,000 gas stations across the entire state. And most of them have a lot of different pumps and a lot of different types of gas to inspect. That's not a lot of inspectors to go to every single gas station and look at every single gas uh, tank. Representative Ray Winkle Vasilinda, who sits on the House committee that oversees gas stations, says we have to be very careful about our budget. She would support an annual inspection. Pump number eight, please, number eight. If the state can pay for it. But what we've been hearing is cut, 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 cut budgets, which means cut, cut, cut state employees, which means cut the inspectors. <laughs> What about all the waste that's going on? <laughs> Drivers whose cars were affected by bad gasoline say the pump is one place the state should not be looking at to cut down on costs. There is a definite worry cloud right over my head. The Department of Agriculture says it will work with lawmakers in the House and Senate on any proposed legislation in the new session. The Contact 5 investigator spent the past few months uncovering how much empty government property is costing you. Is it a big investment or a big waste of money? They're empty. That's just, I'm sorry, that's just ridiculous. Worn down. Oh my God. And left behind. That's crazy when they're not even using it. We added it up. In just the past five years, more than $3 million has been spent on unused government property in our area. That's unfathomable for me, that type of money. Like here in Fort Pierce, school leaders tore down the old high school, but kept these unused portable classrooms, costing taxpayers $60,000. And 83 cents. <laughs> forget the 83 cents. Don't forget the 83 cents. <laughs> There's nothing to maintain. What is it? What do they do? Cut the weeds? Actually, that's another 5,000. <laughs> Come on. Out in the glades, the state shut down the prison last year to save money. I'm not surprised of anything that they do. Since then, the vacant buildings and security is costing you $112,000. They're paying that money for nothing. And here in the air at Palm Beach International, the Fed spent more than $19 million on this new air traffic control tower. Two years later, it's still empty, and they're still spending money to maintain it. First, a closer look at the agency with some of the biggest expenses. Palm Beach County, more than 100 vacant properties, from prime oceanfront real estate to unused green spaces to buildings that are attracting unwanted visitors. The total price tag... $113 million. Why isn't the county considered selling some of this property to offset all the massive budget cuts? If we do own land we can sell, we just want to make sure we get a good price for it. And that's the thing that's tough to do right now. County Administrator Robert Weissman wants to hold on to most of the land for future use, including this office building near the airport, a building that has sat mostly empty for the past six years, costing you a total of $600,000. Even if you don't want to sell it, why haven't you considered leasing it to save $100,000 a year? We're hopeful within five years to have full occupancy of that building. But another five years means another $500,000 in taxpayer money. Yes, but it might take $8 million to fix it up. If you think that sounds like a lot, we took a tour of the county's most expensive vacant property with the guy who maintains it. As a taxpayer, we paid uh, $60 million for this land. A lot of money. A lot of money. 
a big chunk of land called Mecca Farms, bought for Scripps Labs that were later built in Jupiter. And it's just still sitting here today. Kind of a waste. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Now taxpayers are stuck footing the bill to take care of it. What if I told you they spend $250,000 a year just to maintain this property? To do what? That's surprising as hell. I mean, I don't know how... That's surprising. A total of $2 million to take care of a property they haven't been able to unload. If we could sell it, we would save the taxpayers a lot. What do you have to say to some taxpayers who might look at this and say, hey, you're misspending my money? I think the way we're managing our properties is the best we can do for the taxpayers and ourselves for the long run. And that takes us back to where we started, to those unused classrooms in St. Lucie County. Why don't you just tear them down? We, we might. The prison might reopen one day, too, so the state doesn't want to sell it. And as for the empty tower that rises above them all, the feds may have to spend even more money before moving in next year. It wasn't built big enough in the first place. Spending that kind of money on a vacant property? I'm sorry. I just, I, I think that's just wrong. Tonight, the feds told me we should have documents associated with that airport tower by the end of the day tomorrow. We will let you know, of course. Plus, we also want to point out Scripps Labs is not affiliated with WPTV or its owner, the EW Scripps Companies. Michael, as you know, that development was supposed to be located at Mecca Farms. It later moved north. Gas storage tanks, as you can see right here, are huge, and they're installed right into the ground. That's where we get our drinking water from. So when there's a leak, it's a big problem, and there are a lot of them. Inspectors say they're working to protect you on your dime. But as the Contact 5 investigators discovered, you may not be getting exactly what you're paying for. Anna Elkins and her family cook with their well water. It always smells. Water the lawn with it. Even brush their teeth with it. It's like a metal smell to it. This is just nasty. But she had no idea. An underground gas bill at a nearby business back in 2010 could have threatened the quality of her well water. I'm shocked because I think that I, I need to know. It's, I think it's my right to know. And she's not alone. Florida has more fuel cleanup sites than any other state in the country. State records show there are more than 1,200 sites in our area alone. Dave Gibson is in charge of cleaning up most of those sites. There are so many of them that the state just doesn't have the funding to do to clean them all up all at the same time. So the state moved more than 250 cases, including a site near Anna's Lake Park home, to the top of the cleanup list because the fuel spilled too close to the drinking water supply. They targeted the ones that are considered the, the most imminent threat. Just because a spill doesn't happen on your property doesn't mean you can't be affected. The contamination can spread. As you can see, that's why the state tests the public and private drinking wells in a half mile radius around each of the sites. And get this. You probably don't know you're paying at the pump for the state to spot those leaks and to help clean them up. We took a closer look at the numbers. Every time you fill up, you're getting charged an extra four cents a gallon for the program. That's about a dollar every time you fill up your tank, and the numbers add up. The state collects close to $200 million from the tax every year. So what am I paying for? We uncovered what you're paying for, workers to inspect the underground tanks. You got this is broke, see that? To spot leaks before they threaten your water. The system's not perfect, and uh, things start to leak eventually and uh, it doesn't take any time at all for the gasoline to get into the groundwater. But over the past five years, 45 inspectors have been cut, plus another 50 cleanup workers. Contaminations are going to go on the rise. Remember, the state already has more contaminated sites than any other state. Plus, they used to inspect every tank once a year. Patrick Willie, the head of inspections for most of our area, says most tanks are now inspected once every two years. With fewer inspectors, does that mean more contamination could go unnoticed in our area? There's a potential, yes, that, that spills could go longer without being detected. The longer it takes to spot a spill, the bigger the threat. We could be there for decades. The longer it sits, the harder it is to clean up. State lawmakers set up the system back in the 80s. We went to Tallahassee to find out where your money's going today. Well, we were required to uh, face a budget cut. Robert Brown, the state's program director, says 
He had no choice but to cut staff after lawmakers cut his budget. We are doing more inspections with less staff or trying to maintain the same level with less. Just this year alone, $8 million of your gas tax money was taken from the program and used to help balance the state's dwindling budget. The one up there. As for Anna, the state installed a filter on her well after the spill and never tested again. They believe the gasoline hasn't spread. How do they know the filter is working? We're talking about public safety here. Why aren't everyone's wells tested on a regular basis? If their resources were available to do that, I would say more power to you. We don't have the resources to do that. Right now, I'm really scared. I don't feel safe. We worked with a lab to have Anna's water tested for her. Luckily, results show no harmful chemicals were in her drinking water supply. But the state has hooked some people up to city water after finding chemicals in the well water. That's what happened to people who live near this now torn down gas station in Lantana after a spill back in 2008. Now, if you'd like to find out if you live near one of these sites, we have put together this interactive map here on our website. You can find this under the investigative tab at WPTV.com. You can click on any one of those red dots, find out where they're located, when the spill took place, and what the status is of the cleanup. Dan Krauth joins us with the latest. Dan. Yeah, Kelly, there's $80,000 worth of damage at this home alone. This homeowner is not using this raft for fun. She's using it to take all the items she can salvage out of her home. She's putting it on the raft, and she's carrying it across her lawn, believe it or not. This is her lawn to her car parked right across the street, and she's not alone. Take a look over here. The entire neighborhood is underwater right now. Tonight, the neighbors are hoping for some federal assistance, but it's also something they're not counting on. Yep. Waterfront property. If you think the damage is bad outside of Michelle Smith's house. Yeah, here's the bathroom. <laughs> take a look inside. Water started rushing in Monday afternoon. A disaster. Total disaster. What if it was a hurricane? It wasn't even a hurricane. As you can see here from the line on the wall, the water has gone down a lot over the past 24 hours, but the damage has already been done. Where, where, do, where do we go? I know. <laughs> Got to start over somewhere. Tape and towels weren't enough to keep the water away. The place is soaked. Entire walls have to be replaced. This shouldn't happen in America. <laughs> shouldn't happen in America. Governor Scott toured the area today by air to check out the damage. We want to make sure that one, everybody's safe and we start solving the problems. But for flooding victims like Michelle, it's not enough. Right, yeah. And he goes back home. <laughs> Where do we go? You know, your friends have put up with you for so long. Here, there's where the water level was yesterday. The governor said the area could get federal aid if not just Palm Beach County, but the entire state has $25 million in uninsured damages. Many of these flooding victims don't have insurance because they don't live in a floodplain. What more will it take to get federal help? Well, I mean, we're going we're gonna to go through the, the process. Look, FEMA wants to be helpful. Uh, we have a very good working relationship with FEMA. FEMA won't know until at least next week if homeowners like Michelle will be eligible for federal help. Meanwhile, the governor said these local officials are getting the job done. We believe that at a local level that we're responding to all of the needs and, and requests um, at a local level. Some homeowners aren't convinced. I hope to have a place to live. I hope to have a roof over my head that I've worked hard to pay for. Now, back out here live, you'll find this door marker that says OK on it. That's because two firefighters with the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Department just showed up a few minutes ago to do a welfare check. They're going up and down the street right now, and residents here are very happy to see them, of course.